hello there. You are now entering, quite frankly. 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 Want to correct the record? We all support. Quite frankly. So everybody watch. Quite frankly. With Frank. Jim. Jim, you there? Yeah, what's up, buddy? Oh man, you, you look. You, you're looking. First of all, you change your setup. You look nice, yeah, man. I'm in my. Li- I'm in my living room now. Oh, good lord. I like the setup, man. And you know what? The color red. Uh, red does you good. It's a. It's a fiery topic. Um, I figured I'd put my get over it shirt on because <laughs> the NSA guys watching this. Y'all are going to have to get over it today. Well, welcome back to the show, by the way. And a lot of people have been asking me, so uh, have you been taking a little bit of a, um, a, lighter, a lighter schedule with your channels over the summer? People have been wondering what you've been doing. Yeah, I've been hiding out, um, playing with the kids. Uh, i got a nine-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, been at the beach, been working out, doing mixed martial arts. Um, been uh working on websites for other people so i'm you know decided to really start up my my website creation business so i've done three cl- um, clients over the summer um, well been- listen I'm, I'm i'm glad i feel i feel very honored to have you on on the show i mean i know that you've done other things you've been on clyde lewis again recently i was listening to that uh, a couple of weeks ago it was one of the hottest weeks of the year that's why i remember it so you're always great when you show up on clyde's show and tonight Man, oh, man, do we have something to talk about because I can't wait to get a little bit more of an in-depth dive with you on something that you've only teased us with in the past. Now, when it comes to the failed intelligence coup d'etat that we are sifting through all the pieces over here, it seems that we're getting closer and closer to, to people like John Brennan, the CIA, but we're also starting to talk about the infrastructure that makes the Spygate Russia hoax scandals even possible, and that is the coordination of international spy agencies. And I want to read something to you real quick before we get started. It's a very short Q&A. It's one question and one answer that a buddy of mine had sent me. And he said this. Here's the question. All of the famous talking heads are now talking about what did Obama know about Spygate and when did he know it? But do you know what undeniably ties him, and pr- ties him to it and proves it? Two things. The first thing. Strzok and Page text discussing the president wanting to know everything that we are doing. And in the second and most important piece of evidence, the executive order stripping all safeguards on raw info across the intelligence community. That allowed Brennan to spread five eyes gathered data. There is no other explanation for that executive order. And there's no way Obama issues it without knowing it was the key to Brennan's effort to run the coup. Now, there's five eyes again. And I would love for you to just explain a little bit to people, what are we looking at with Five Eyes? And then from there, we can talk about the network that powers it. Um, sure. So you got to go all the way back to World War II to understand what the Five Eyes are. Um, basically, you know, Britain was begging us to come save their butts. Um, well, you know, the whole world was. And we were reticent to get into it, you know, of course, until... Um, the Pearl Harbor attack. But regardless, uh, there was an agreement signed between the UK and America called the British UK Agreement, BRUK. And what it basically did was hand all of the raw intelligence data from Britain to America. So it was a a, what's called signals intelligence or SIGINT for short, um, a signals intelligence agreement, sharing agreement. Um, and this was back in 1943. So th- this was built upon um, ever since, which grew to be what's now known as the Five Eyes. Before Edward Snowden, um, before you know, I had ever heard of Stone Ghost, the the collective term was Echelon. Everybody referred to it as Echelon, um, and I and I wanted to map out Echelon. So I really started digging into this topic and. Um, there's a U.S. Naval Signals Intelligence uh, group, which is called Oz Can Zuckus, and that is the Five Eyes. 
Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, UK. Os can zucus. So N Z U S U K. It's very creative. Uh, yeah, I know, right? So I started looking up everything I could find about Oz can zucus and then, you know, of course, uh, it branched out with the Edward Snowden releases about, and you would see at the top of a lot of the papers, rel to F V E Y. And that means relevant to, or relate to five eyes. Um, so that would, that would be a, a signal at the top of the page saying that this is to be shared among all five eyes members. So if you're talking about Illuminati, if you're talking about New World Order and you're talking about a pyramid scheme, at the top of the pyramid is the five eyes. Um, underneath that, you have the nine eyes and the 14 eyes, which you alluded to earlier. So we have Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom and United States in the five eyes. We have Denmark, France, the Netherlands and Norway in the nine eyes. And then in the 14 eyes, the bottom rung, you have Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. So all of these countries together make up what is called the Anglosphere. There's, there's another word you really don't want to hear. Wow. Because it immediately makes, makes you think of Anglo-Saxon. Um, this is a rich white boy club. I mean, what's going on here? Uh, but regardless... All 14 eyes members share their signals intelligence, which is spy information with each other. All of this is routed to the NSA and Defense Information Systems Agency, all of which is reported directly to Obama. Um, yeah, they don't make a move without all of these eyes. You know, Climate Viewer, my website, climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org is where the maps are. And you can actually see a map of um, you know, the five eyes and the undersea cables and all of that sort of thing. I think I might have yeah. it over here. I have, uh, let me see. I'm, I'm on your, your climateviewer.com forward slash privacy page. Where should I go? I can bring it up on... Yeah, it, there, there's a little picture of a map right underneath the privacy fact. If you click on that, just click the picture. It'll take you to it. All right. um, for those playing along at home and for those in chat, it's climateviewer.com slash privacy. And if you go through the fact, what you're going to realize is everybody's abusing this. It's not just the Democrat Party. Um, there literally is a WikiLeaks cable where the State Department was targeting activists in Paris, France, who didn't want Monsanto GMO corn. And I'd like to read just a little bit of this while you bring that map up. I, I'm uh, and before and while before you start reading, what I have over here is a it's a it's an interactive globe map. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All right. I, I see all of the uh, the pyramids in the yeah. Eastern Hemisphere. If you, if you want, I can bring it up as well. Okay, you go um, you go for it. Here, I'll do that real quick. Let me go to share screen. All right, here, share, not the big screen, the little screen. All right, tell me when you see that. I you see, see that? It. Yep, all set. All right, so what you're seeing here are all of the Five Eyes members. I've taken the other stuff off because if you go over here to the map list, you'll see that I also have... Um, Department of Homeland Security Fusion Centers. They're part of the, um, the matrix as well. And then UAV drones over America. You'll see the, the planes. Um, so I just turned those off. But regardless, um, there's 664 maps on climateviewer.org. And I just have two of them up at the moment. Now, right here is the Utah Data Center. And if you want to, you can blow this up. And what you'll see is that's where Hillary Clinton's emails are. That's where um, the wow. recordings of Trump talking to a prime minister in Australia are. That's where every single piece of communication in the world is stored. It, it, they're, the mainframes in there are so large that... Um, in Nevada, they were the they were the Utah. Um, they were literally talking about the protesting by shutting off the water to the facility because it uses so much water to cool 
the supercomputers in there. Yeah, Beehive, Mad Hatter's on top of it in chat. My dog. Wow. Um, or Bumblehive is the other, the right there, Bumblehive. You're very close. Uh, but I, I know I know that right alone is going to make people's ears perk up the way that you put that, that all of Hillary Clinton's uh, emails, they are right there. Every Everything that's ever crossed the Internet pretty much is stored there. And it's insane the, the size of this place. In fact, I'll do this real quick. Um, let me let me bring up the satellite map and you can see it uh, for yourself. I'll click on that and uh, roll one right here, and then we'll go down to the ground, and then we'll just zoom right back out. This is a, a very large facility. I mean, we're talking absolutely huge. It makes your mall look tiny. Um, there's the, the 100 meters. So we're talking this tiny building's 100 meters long. <laughs> I mean, these are massive, 200 meters wide by 100 meters long, um, each of these main buildings. And this entire place is obviously surrounded by barbed wire and machine guns. But regardless, this is only one facility. It's the largest facility, but you look worldwide at what's going on. Um, over here in Hawaii, the, the internet. Oh, God. Dude, this happens every time I talk about the NSA. <laughs> yeah, well, I would have to imagine. I'd have to imagine. It's too much truth. Okay, we're back on. So you were just saying you were talking about the underwater cables, you said, or the internet that, that linked uh, Hawaii, and then you were just about to talk about Guam. Yeah, so as you can see, that basically they have their eyes everywhere. And you know all of the internet that travels across the sea, they're funneled through these underwater cables, and of course they have facilities at these locations to um, you know track that as well. So you see down here in Australia, um, you can see here's all the internet cables coming in. Bam, there's a facility. I'm um, sure there's a facility here. I just need to find it. Um, but I've done a lot of legwork finding these. They're not exactly easy to find. Um, but each one of these is a little mini web page you can click on. And uh, you actually see photos of the facility. Um, Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap Prohibited Area. Turn around now. Um, you know, this typical stuff, but this is, this is the spy apparatus. When they say FISA abuse, getting a FISA warrant is, is basically your way of getting access to all of this material, um, to all of the raw intelligence that's available through this collective and, and, and to make things worse, that's only the five eyes on the map. I haven't even included the nine eyes and the 14 eyes um, surveillance facilities. So if you were to really see the size and scope and, and clearly, you know, a person like me doing this, you know, just from my house, I, I've been able to find all this information, you know, off the internet. <laughs> so this is the top secret of the top secret of the top secret stuff. You can only imagine how many facilities there are, you know, worldwide. Um, and, and, you know, you could even see that in some of Snowden's documents that, you know, when you looked at the prism map, um, that there were many facilities throughout the world that clearly aren't on my map yet. Um, but the, the whole the, to get back to the idea of Obama's involvement in all this, yeah, you know, he's the, the head dog, you know, the HNIC. Um, <laughs> so he is going to know about this activity. He has to authorize it. And generally speaking, there's a revolving door. Um, if the UK wants to spy on its citizens, it asks the America to do it. If America wants to spy on its citizens, it asks the UK to do it. Similarly, just like with the Australia thing, you know, how do how do they get a conversation between the president and the prime minister in in Australia? How do you think it's one of the Five Eyes members? So. This deep state that is not elected, it is, you know, promoted through the ranks, you know, you make it to the top and you're, you know, four star general, colonel, major working in defense information systems agency, NSA, um, all, all of this stuff. These guys have been bred to believe that what they're doing is in for national security purposes, 
um, that they're going, you know, they're helping America, they're helping the entire 14 eyes, uh, you know, with their agenda. But then you go read things like uh, what 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 came out on WikiLeaks, and and and, 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 um, and right before you get to WikiLeaks, I think it's it's important that I I I just want to re- reiterate what what Jim is putting on out there, because countries like ours, I mean, nobody has a a, a constitution and a bill of rights like ours, but because there are countries out there that actually value a reasonable level of privacy. privacy and uh, a, a protection against illegal search and seizures for their citizens. This is why this kind of an apparatus is so egregious, because it's a way to skirt domestic law by asking a friend of yours to spy on your citizens for you. And that's what Jim is uh, is putting on up there. Okay, go. Uh, we're on to WikiLeaks now, you said. Yeah, so this is... Um... <clears throat> I think I have the, well, I have a link to the cable. You can, there, it's all referenced on the page. So if you go to climateviewer.com <clears throat> slash privacy, you can read the references. All of this is real. Um, it says, we should not pre- be prepared to seed on cultivation because our considerable planting seed business in Europe, our, now this is a State Department cable. Why is the State Department referring to Monsanto product as our in the first place? Then it says point number six. Country Team Paris recommends that we calibrate a target retaliation list that causes some pain across the EU since this is a collective responsibility, but also focuses in part on the worst culprits. The list should be measured rather than vicious and must be sustainable over the long term since we should not expect an early victory. This is the State Department telling Country country Team Paris to get a list of activists, people like you, so that they can use the NSA spy apparatus, the five eyes, the 14 eyes, the collective weight of all of this spy equipment to help push a Monsanto product, which has been found, you know, well, at least the glyphosate, the Roundup so far, but, you know, it's it'd probably be another 10, 20 years before we get to the GMO corn and how it really affects you. But regardless, to push an American product that the country clearly does not want, and they're going to use the freaking NSA and the Five Eyes, 14 Eyes, Stone Ghost Network to spy on those individuals and cause pain across the EU, that's some scary crap. So I have about 10 separate references from Raytheon to Lockheed Martin and on down the list where this network was used to screw another country's company so that Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, or others got the deal. Now, let's take it back to politics. The same is true. Information is power. And being able to get to somebody's secrets gives you unlimited power. And the word for today should be leverage. So if you can get leverage on your opponents and you have access to this network, then you pretty much know all their secrets. Imagine how much tab dancing I could make you do, Frank, if I, you don't probably, you, ha, you don't have enough, you're not a pedo, so it's, I'm not exactly yeah, effective on you. I, that's the one thing I can say. <laughs> I mean, but, but when you're, when you're out there snorting lines off a hooker's back, um, oh, like, I, most, I, like most politicians are, um, you know, everybody's got their weakness, especially, you know, ultimate power corrupts ultimately. I haven't convinced it, Lauren to follow me down that path yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, these people with power, they, they abuse it. And this network is right there to catch it all. Um, and then they've got, you know, obviously foot feet on the ground and the CIA, all, all of that's typed right into a computer. So all the, all of these records are available and Obama, um, unlocking, unchaining the, um, (laughs) uh, the intelligence network was right about that. Now this is where it gets even creepier. Um, Israel has full unmasked access to Stone Ghost. Glenn Greenwald reported this. Um, 
the original documents are available online. They're referenced on my page. You can download them and look at it yourself. But when they talk about unmasking American citizens um, and how that was a problem, well, guess what? Israel gets all of this information from the five eyes, the 14 eyes, and isn't even a member. I was just going to ask you that. I don't even remember you naming Israel. They're not in the list. But they have access to Stone Ghost. Isn't that creepy? So they get any information they want from this network unmasked, even creepier. Um, and then, well, is this ripe for abuse? Well, how about this? They talk about Russian collusion and how Russia is involved. Well, turns out there was an article um, a little while ago. Russia buys access to Stone Ghost. Canadian Navy spy sold NSA secrets to Russia for $3,000 a month. This is where I learned about the, you know, the, the, the name Stone Ghost. Um, it says, uh, while he worked there, he worked on a system called the Stone Ghost, said CBC reporter Robert Gordon. It's a computer system that links the five eyes. The five eyes are U United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. All their information is shared on the Stone Ghost computer network. It's, you know, so by now, the Stone Ghost has been renamed. That's the way these things go. Whenever they, they did the weather warfare over Vietnam and Jack Anderson said it was Operation Popeye, they immediately renamed it to Operation Motor Pool. And then when that was out, they renamed it to Operation Intermediary Compatriot. So referring to it as Stone Ghost, that's what it was referred to as at the time that all of this was disclosed. It obviously has a new name, but regardless, it's the same damn idea. It's a supercomputer network that connects all of these countries and they share their spy information on it so that they can all spy on each other, share that information. Um, and that's why, without a doubt, Obama knew what was going on when they were spying on the Trump team. Um, that many, if we really were to be able to dig deep enough into this, we would find out that, you know, uh, Project Veritas, there's a Project Veritas video talking about the Democratic Socialists of America, DSA, and bragging about that they have a defense contractor friend. So that's how they show up at Ted Cruz, um, you know, eating in a diner. That's how they show up in, 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 in mobs because literally the danger of this network, the danger of this vast amount of information and it all being collected in one spot is there are so many people who have access to it and it only takes one bad apple to spoil a whole bunch of secrets. So if you get access to a defense contractor that say is, say works at like HP, Bar Gary, Palantir, Barrico Technologies, there are so many of these defense contractors out there that are spy contractors and they are civilians. They're not even military. Um, get dirt on one of them and or if they've got a radical agenda like the Democrat Socialists of America do and he shares that ideology, well, suddenly he's feeding information to the DSA and they're able to go out and find Republicans in restaurants because guess what? They're like, Hey, can you pull up, um, you know, Ted Cruz's, uh, cell phone and track it real quick and tell me where he's at. That's how scary this is. That's why it's a problem. And, and it's coming out right now. I mean, I heard, um, Sean Hannity last night talk about the five eyes. Um, and, you know, the, the raw intelligence sharing between our, our, you know, our friends. So that's what's been going on for quite some time. I, you know, I've been, I've been talking about this. I've had this map up since 2008, um, long before Snowden ever mentioned it. And to me, it really creeps me out. You can turn your location off on your phone, mobile phone, Jenna. That does not matter. Um, as a hacker, I happen to know that you can turn your uh, camera off. You can actually turn the camera on. You can record audio, all of that while the computer, is, while the phone is off. You can turn location services on while the phone is off. So just go ahead and 
pretend all you want that that's helping jim i, um, I gotta say with what you're describing right now and i and i knew that we had something really uh horrible whenever anything is centralized we know that it is good it's going to be just ready to be abused in some way so you're talking about an international collective for intelligence you know it's going to be abused but for you to uh, to to first come on and expand it from show us from five to nine to 14 and then to say that you have non-member states that are paying for access to unfiltered information about American citizens and politicians and entertainers and anybody of influence that could, uh, even in industry, not even just politics, just an in industry. If you want to grease your palm a little bit and start a side hustle, I mean, the, what, what, you're what you're describing here is just, it's almost just like pay to play, and, but it's on such a massive scale and you would never even know about it. How, how the hell can something like that even happen where even members stay? What's the, what's the purpose of membership? If if you're if mem non members can get get a hold of this, I mean at the end of the day, I honestly believe that this is you know when people I went hunting for the Illuminati and I found the fourteen eyes, I went hunting for the New World Order and I found the ABCA Army, America British Canadian Army. We have a solitary army you ever heard of it abca no i mean the more you look at it, these are called supranational unions and they basically link us you know closer and closer together with these foreign countries and in what's called communitarian law um communitarian law circumvents constitutional law the whole cop 21 uh, agenda 2030 the whole idea behind, you know, climate change is going to kill us in 12 years. What's 12 years? Oh, that's 2030. That's Agenda 2030. These communitarian laws that they're trying to write to circumvent our Constitution, to institute a one world government. How do they get this information? Technocracy. What is at the root of technocracy? The use of censors to, you know, scientifically control the world and all its resources. What's the number one resource on the planet? people then food and water um but information is how they control people and they need these sensors and especially networks like the five eyes in order to you know advance their agendas so while the people on the intelligence committees they know you know all that all of this apparatus you know is there they know how it works they know why it works and they probably also know how many people um, are abusing it. But it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like if you had three you know, siblings and you knew the one kid had already stolen a cookie. And then you're like, well, as long as mom doesn't find out, I want access to the cookie jar, too. So you don't rat me out. I won't rat you out. And we'll both just be you know, stealing cookies. That's that's basically what's going on here. You've got corporations abusing this network. You got politicians abusing this network. Hell, you probably have individuals, especially the very rich ones who know a guy who's a defense contractor who they pay. Russia paid a, a Canadian um, naval guy three thousand dollars a month. That is cheap. That is chump change. $3,000 a month to get access to the Stone Ghost Network. So you want to talk about real Russian influence over things. Being able to access all of this intelligence for a measly $3,000 a month, you think they don't, haven't paid off five more guys since that guy was arrested? Yeah, you're freaking mine. Well, you brought this up uh, not earlier on in the call, too, about the, the Utah location for where all the, the, the data is collected um, from the NSA and whatnot. And you brought up uh, Hillary Clinton's 30,000 emails since they're so, I mean, it's, it's almost like a novelty at this point to, to mention that batch of emails. But we also they, know they're there. Oh, they are there. And, and furthermore, they said very clearly, you know, up five countries violated that server in the basement bathroom or whatever. Five separate countries, which means how do they know that? Oh, it wasn't from just studying the box. It's because there is a law in place called CALIA, the Communication Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. Communication 
Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. And it requires every single internet service provider to keep 90 days of your records um, of every bit that is passed in and out of your modem. Why? Because they're also required by law to have taps on all of their internet equipment so that the NSA can access it and then download all that information. So that it can, you know, just like Google and the, and Yahoo, they have what's called spiders and they crawl the internet and they pick up things and they bring it back home. Well, the NSA does the same thing. It's picking up every single phone call, every single text message. Every time you think that you're, um, you know, on some private, oh, it's, it's Snapchat. It's only, you know, for a little while and it deletes itself. Nothing is ever... The, the saying goes, there are no take backs on the internet. Wow. And there really isn't when you're talking about the, the 14 eyes. And of course, Russia and China probably have exactly similar apparatus set up all over the world. They do it and China does it through things like Huawei or, you know, Trump's fighting back on that. <clears throat> Half of these little robot dogs that people are buying and putting in their house, um, I have an article from 2013 where literally a teapot kettle was accessing a Wi-Fi network and spying on people. It was made in China. Well, we, we were we were covering this last year at some point. I forget what point of the year it was, but how it started getting reported that this little these little microchips, these these chips that were foreign to the consumer technology that was being. Um, shipped around the world, whether it be Russia, the United States, but they were originating from China, and that they were designed to be activated whenever they were plugged in or whatever or put to use where, where the, the ultimate home of the product was. And it was feeding back information just from regular Americans' houses. You came on the show once before here, too, and talked about how in, your, in some past employment situations you've had, even just working for tire companies, you've had to go face-to-face -face with Chinese hackers who just want to be able to get into uh, American mainframes for menial um, information, like the prices of tires, so that they can undercut yep. competition. You know, yep. so it's not even, it's it's really... Uh, that's a economic warfare 101. We've actually been in World War Three for, in my opinion, at a minimum the last 10 years, probably longer than that, and it's been a cyber war. I mean, it's actually gone hot a couple times when Israel and America, the Mossad and the NSA got together and created Stuxnet and blew up the Bashir nuclear um, site in Iran. That was the world's first cyber um, weapon that actually destroyed a physical device, like blew up a nuclear power plant. OK, um, and we've been at cyber war all this time um we've had all these massive power outages around the the country lately that are just unexplainable well that that's part of the scatter or SCADA network it's an internet under the internet that controls your traffic lights your water pumps your you know electrical grid well you know chinese hackers iranian the iranian hacker um who violated google facebook um, Twitter and um, the, uh, the Komodo um, SSL certificate um, hack, he bragged about, you know, he did this all the same day, literally made copies of Facebook and Google and all of that and redirected the entire Internet traffic to them. Um, China has the night, um, night dragon attacks that they were doing. But regardless, um, all of this goes back to, you know, they've been bragging about being able to shut our power off in America. And the Heritage Foundation said that if America were to lose power from a high altitude electromagnetic pulse or cyber warfare, high altitude electromagnetic pulse being massive solar flare or a nuclear bomb detonated high in the sky, not on the ground, that it would blow out all the power in America. That if the power in America were shut down, that 60% of Americans would die within six months from crime and starvation because people would lose their shit. They'd go out hunting door to door when you got kids and you're hungry. And it's, you know, like that TV show Revolution, I believe it was called. Um, 
except you know they of course try to turn it into aliens or something else later on yeah. but that's the reality of the situation that everything is connected to the internet and the more they connect to the internet the worse it's gonna be you you look at um you know i used to play dungeons and dragons okay i mean i, I admit it advanced dungeons and dragons two second edition nerd well they're n- n- nerd <laughs> um well, there was also one called Shadowrun, and in Shadowrun and this new video game coming out next year called Cyberpunk 2077. I can't wait for that, by the way. Oh, my God, man. It's Shadowrun. They're finally making a Shadowrun video game. In Shadowrun, in this world, in the future, corporations run the world, and everybody's got like a jack like the Matrix and can connect to the Internet, you know, and you got the cyber neural interfaces and all that kind of stuff. Um but that's where we're, that's where we're headed. And it's scary to think that, you know, the more we connect, like they're talking about, you know, health Medicare for all, just to wait till every single medical record is now available, you know, online. Um, that's just brilliant. You know, your private conversations with your doctors are now funneled into the NSA's, you know, network and then disseminated across the globe to any, to the highest purchaser. Um, that's, that's why I take offense to this. That's why this needs to be reined in. That's why more oversight needs to happen. Um, I don't know what it's going to take to, you know, cause politicians, you know, half of them know that the defense contractors run America. You know, they'll say we can't cut back on defense spending because, you know, they make the tanks and these 15 companies make the parts for the tanks and these 2,700 companies make the parts for the guys who make the parts for the tanks. Um, but regardless, at some point we have to rein this in because this kind of signals intelligence information gathering and the way it's being you know disseminated to companies like Monsanto, all the defense contractors, um, and the highest bidder. Um, I would not doubt that, you know, George Soros, you know, has access when there's literally Democrat Socialists of America on Project Veritas videos bragging about being able to talk to a defense contractor. And that defense contractor has access to this information so they can spy on anybody. They did it to Donald Trump. If they'll do it to the president because he doesn't hold the same ideology as the ones that are running it all. Imagine what they can do to you. And, Jim, I brought that up, that very same question. I asked that to John Whitehead today in a uh, in a interview that I pre-recorded that's going to be out um, on Friday Friday morning. And I asked him, I said, what what chance, what chance does, if this was what, we, what, we're, what we're looking at here, if this is what's being done to the chief executive of the country, then what kind of a chance does a, a, an average person have against a, a machine like this? This is prior to knowing how deep this goes with what you're describing here right now. He said there is no chance. You know, it's just it's just so overwhelming. And when you bring up when you bring up what needs to be what needs to be done and and uh, an oversight or or be, just shedding light on this, I all automatically have a sinking feeling in my stomach because whereas Five Eyes has popped up in the news cycle, and yeah, you mentioned that you heard it on Hannity. They're going to talk about Five Eyes because it's very apparent here that we had our Five Eyes partners helping out. I mean, uh, Australia, the UK, and the US are are right in the middle of all this stuff. Italy is involved with the the, the Russia coup investigation. We have a couple other locations that pop up uh, uh, here and there, but what we're talking about here is something so big, and and the Never. Italy is a 14 eyes member. So, I mean, oh, they just, are. Okay. It, well, all, well, so, it all comes right back to that. See, you know, the, that, and here's the thing I wanted to bring up my, my biggest concern is that they're going to bring this up. They're going to isolate this as a really horrible attempt at interfering with domestic policy in the United States. But nobody ever at any time during this, uh, this coup talk, this narrative since 2016, has ever suggested that the system itself needs to go. You know, even with mm-hmm. FISA, nobody's ever suggesting that FISA existing in itself is a bad thing. They think it's it's necessary for our national security. We have to find a way to make it safe, and we have to find a way to make oversight something that is feasible. So I, I, I'm, I I'm really, really have low faith when it comes to 
um, actually doing something that needs to be done to helping out the world order um, heal. But uh, still, I mean, imagine you you walk into the you know the um, intelligence committee and you say, you know, we really need to rein this in. They say, oh really? Where were you at last week? I mean, seriously, like there 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 is probably not. I mean, maybe five guys in all of Washington, um, D.C. that really have nothing in their past that can, you know, bring them down. Um, and apparently Trump happens to be one of them. I mean, because they've, th- they've dug up every piece of dirt they can and got nowhere. So somehow God handed us a Cheeto miracle grenade, hand grenade, um, and he doesn't have dirt in his past that they can find, which is just a modern-day miracle. Um, that's why they're losing their shit on news on a daily basis. <laughs> well, we, well, like we said, we got to just pass the baton to somebody. We, 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 uh, hopefully, we're getting something, the ball rolling in the opposite direction with Trump, and hopefully that there's there's uh, there's a a renaissance within the minds of Americans that start producing even more bold people who want to go in there and do even deeper cleanings. Let me ask you something else. I've seen a few people ask it in the chat room already. Is it? With all this talk, it seems like there's no escape. It, is it even uh, – do VPNs even work? VPNs work against um, – all right, so I look at the internet in several tiers. You've got your your what we call script kiddies. Script kiddies are the lowest rung of the hacker world. Um, they're basically people who download programs and then they watch tutorials and they learn how to hack. Then you've got, you know, the next level, which is your DEF CON goers, your, your black hat community, um, some defense contractors, and they have access to tools that are on a different level. Um, they actually understand the big Coke and inject, you know, viruses directly into your motherboard, not just your, instead of what's called a root kit, which lives on your, your hard drive, they can install what's called a boot kit, which lives actually in the UFI part of your BIOS of your motherboard. I recently had my, my BIOS corrupted by a second tier or third tier state level um, virus and um, had to have that chip actually removed from the motherboard, replaced, and I sold the computer to a friend. Um, but at the second level, you know, you've got companies like Finn Fisher. You can look them up online. They brag about what they do. We break into people's computers for, com- um, for governments. Um, and then the third tier being, you know, the, the, guy, the guys in the NSA, um, the, the, the Chinese, um, what is it? The PLA, PLA's hacking team. Um, these guys have access to original schematics, hardware, you know, uh, direct from manufacturers. Hell, they hack Google. I mean, this came out in Google, you know, even though Google's sharing almost all of its information with China and America, um, even the NSA had a, a, a setup going where the NSA and the CIA were catching information flowing between their data centers that they weren't sharing. So at that level, if they if they can literally hack Google, they the, the only solution, because I could go on and on about how there is no such thing as secure information security is an oxymoron. Um, and I know this at being an infosec guy since I was 15 years old. I'm 42. I was hacking computers, you know, as early as 18. Um, that literally, there's no such thing as information security. So you have to treat your computer as what I call a burn box, like an open door. You know, if it's on your computer, assume that anybody can have access to it. So what do you do? You keep things on flash drives that are very important. Unplug your internet whenever you want to view them. And even then, um, the the guys in level three, they're going to be able to get access to that too. So anything you type, say, or, you know, webcam into a digital device 
can and will be heard and pro- possibly used against you in a court of law in the future. That's the way you should assume on these things. VPNs are pointless because at that level, if you have Google Chrome, Chrome is going to report its MAC address to Google, the MAC address of your, your LAN card, your Wi-Fi card, the minute you connect through the VPN. Um, so and the same is true of any kind of NSA or any of that. So, yes, I am a bicentennial baby. I was born on Vandenberg Air Force Base um, in 1976. I was born in the year of the dragon. I am a Scorpio. And my dad was a nuclear missile launch technician. Damn. Um, who has told me things that really would have your head spin. But regardless, he's not allowed to lead the country ever because he knew launch codes, apparently. Um, but, and, and my and I won't get into it. But anyway, <laughs> I've, I've toured a defense information system agency building one time in my life. Um, it was very eye-opening. Well, <laughs> I, I got to say, that this is... Uh... This all really does relate, and it only enriches the entire conversation we're having here because I think that there's just so little known about what the capabilities are and, uh, and, and how pervasive this culture of information sharing and spying on an international level really is. And I think if people know it, and even I, I'm shocked by a lot of the things I learned tonight, if people know it, then it, it also takes away that whole, that whole era, that whole aura, I should say, of plausible deniability from these people yeah. in government who say they didn't know what was going on. They found out about it when it was reported on the news. The plausible deniability from people in government completely goes away when you, th- when you learn about how pervasive this is, a- especially the plausible deniability of anybody who says, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's deleted, my, my computer got corrupted, all the data's gone. I mean, e- even that whole thing goes out the window because, you know, it's no, it, it's somewhere. It's probably in Utah. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, because I see spray can in and chat and we're talking, we're just mentioned that I was a dragon. That's right. I'm, I am a dragon. Uh, spray can and made me this climate viewer dragon with the with the climate viewer. Eye. That's so awesome. Wanted, it's pretty, pretty epic work there, uh, girlfriend. I, I keep it right here on my desk. Well, Jim, a I, constant reminder. I, I, I know a lot of people love when you come on the show, and I'm glad you're back on. I can't wait to have you on again. Before we go anywhere, i got to ask you something, though, because we're almost on for an hour, and it feels like it's only 20 minutes because this was so compelling. But I want to switch subjects with you just for a second and ask you, what do you think about these nuclear explosions in Russia um, there was a nuclear explosion in Russia at the beginning of the month, about a half a dozen people dead. I think that it even had connections to Rosatom, which was the, the company at the center of the uranium they one. They got the uranium. Yeah, and, and it, it, they, it, what it was reported as being a test of a nuclear isotope power source. and uh, there was A, a nuclear-powered rocket. So then what do we got? What do you think? Because the last I time you were on, we were talking about the Russian woodpecker and Chernobyl. And then here we are. And, 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 and it just happened again. Oh, the, the radioactive uh, you know, dosimeters magically turned themselves off. And they're being accused of this being like a Chernobyl 2.0, where they're trying to you know downplay all of this. And oh, it was just an accident at a naval you know rocket launch test site. Um, I watched the video of the mushroom clouds. You sent me a text message with a picture that said mushroom clouds over Russia before that had happened, which is freaking amazing to me in and of itself. But really, let me tell you. Yeah, it didn't it was it's in that picture you texted me. It said mushroom clouds over Russia. It was the, one of the first lines. Oh, and that happened before. Anyway, um, what's going on? It, this has happened with several of the, the Russian satellites and the Chinese satellites as well, where they just fell out of orbit. Well, there's a whole lot of ground-based commu- computers and technology involved in getting those things up into the ground. And if you think that they can't insert a virus into the system to, you know, uh, you know, why don't we make thruster number three go three times as hard as the other two? Um, I would I would bet my left testicle that <laughs> there's some uh, hacking involved in that accident. It's not just a 
you know, you know, a mistake. Well, I'll, I'll put you one thing. Accident. I would, tra- if if that's what you're seeing, I definitely trust your judgment. I would never put a testicle on the line, though. Uh, not for anything. I don't care if it's a sure bet. You know, it could just be a you know freak incident of uh, who the hell knows. But Jim, anything else you want to leave us with? Uh, please let everybody know the URLs, where to find you, what any any new work you have coming out soon. Definitely want to get you back on the show as quickly as possible. But let everybody know how to find you. Yeah, you can check me out at climateviewer.com. That's my blog, climateviewer.org. That's my maps. Um, if you want to know about geoengineering the history of weather control, go to weathermodificationhistory.com. Um, and everything I do is free, creative commons. You can remix it, download it, put it on your website, your videos, whatever. All I ask is for donations at patreon.com slash climate viewer or a one-time donation at paypal.me slash climate viewer. Um, yeah, I, I was a boy scout. This is my good turn. I'm a nosy guy. Um, I love input more than Johnny five and I remember everything I read. So I just put it out there for you guys and I enjoy what I do. I am going to be making some videos very shortly and I really appreciate you having me on Frank. I think that you have one of the most unique uh, shows on YouTube and I, you know, I pimp you to everybody I meet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because I pimp you around as well. In fact, you're one of those people now I say, oh, you, you ever heard of Jim Lee? Oh, oh he's my friend. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got you in my suggested on my sidebar on YouTube. And I, I tell everybody, I was like, you want to see a great show? Tune in to Quite Frankly, because Quite Frankly, and I'm James Franklin Lee, um, coming from me to you, uh, you're my brother from another mother, man. I wish I could do half of what you do. I, you know, I, one day I'll have a half. My studio will be one quarter as cool as yours. Well, listen, one day you got to come on up here and hang out in studio. That's that that'll be a day I can't wait for. Oh, man, that'd be epic. All right, man. Have a great one. Thanks a lot for all the uh, all the information and the kind words. And I appreciate you not cutting me off on this goodbye. So good day and be well. <laughs> goodbye, Jim. <laughs> Later, man. Later. I did it. I did not cut him off. I didn't. Well, listen, he's, I, I, can, I really appreciate that. He's got a lot to get. And here, here's a show where I can have people on to talk about either weather manipulation or or the Stone Ghost Network, we can get down into the weeds, or we can talk about how transgender people are getting uh, fake vaginas made out of tilapia fish out in, uh, in, in the UK. This is a show for all of that. From Stone Ghost to tilapia vaginas, we've got it all for you right here, and quite frankly... Kids are impressionable. That's why here at this station, We watch the programs and commercials your child watches carefully. He may see bad guys, but not in the role of heroes. And he'll learn that crime doesn't pay. Because your child's welfare is our concern, too. That's part of our code. Better than anything you can get without a prescription. Anything. It's the best.